Well, hey guys, it's Michael here. In this video, I'm gonna cover six affordable tools to get started in metal fabrication. If you guys are new to my channel, I started on YouTube. I built a sawmill from scratch and with some really basic tools, a flux welder, angle grinder, metal cutting bandsaw, really pretty basic stuff. Uh, since then, I built a quad truck. I put an engine in a little Predator mini bike. And right now I'm working on a 10 part series on building a mini 4x4 articulating dump truck. So anyways, if you're interested in getting started with metal fabrication and not really sure where to go on tools and don't want to break the bank, this video is for you. All right, you guys, the first tool to start off with I'm going to recommend you get is a four and a half inch angle grinder. They come in a range. You can get four, four and a half and five inch are pretty common, but Four and a half inch I find is to be the most versatile for different discs for them. This guy I actually have had for over 10 years. It was 20 bucks from Harbor Freight. It's nearing the end of his lifespan. It came with some replacement brushes and I don't know where I put them 10 years ago. I can't find them and they're finally wearing out. But it's been a great little uh, angle grinder for me. I got this one as a replacement recently. This is about $35 one. And you can get them with the basic on off switch up here and that's pretty good i like that style but where you can go wrong is if you leave it on unplug it and go plug it in later thing will kick on so if you have one of these just pay attention to what you're doing with it i like this style more this one you can get paddle switches or little switches on off on the handle here what i don't like about this is i do sometimes one-handed angle grinding where you can hold on apart and be grinding away. I like it, fits your hand pretty well. This one, too far back to use it single-handed. It's fine if you use it double-handed. Single-handed, it's weird leverage, it doesn't feel as good, so I'll probably pick up another one of these soon. This is one of the most useful discs for this thing. It's a thin curve cutoff disc. Being an angle grinder, I don't use the actual thick grinding disc very often. I don't find them to be that great. I actually do a lot of my grinding with these flap wheels. They work really well. You can get different grits and they're pretty affordable. Uh, you can get wire wheels for them. They, uh, they work pretty good for removing rust. I don't use them as much. Um, I find them to be kind of out of balance and a little funky, but you can get those for them. And these work actually pretty good, but they wear down kind of fast as these uh, stripping discs. They work pretty well. You use any of these, always make sure to wear gloves and uh, safety goggles, especially with the wire brushes, because these things will fling out of here sometimes. Good to wear some proper safety gear, but this is the first tool I highly recommend getting for metal fabrication. This was 20 bucks. This is about 35. You can get them in a range. You can get them at Home Depot or wherever in most stores. These were purchased at Harbor Freight. But the reason I recommend this as the first tool to get is because if you can't cut and grind metal, you're probably not going to be building much with metal. So pick up an angle grinder as your first tool. This tool number two, I highly recommend a welder. Not just any welder. I actually really recommend this little titanium flux 125 welder. The reason is if you're just getting started on fabrication, you're really not sure you really want to break the bank on an expensive welder, a thousand dollar welder or something like that. These things sell for about 150 on the best sales I've seen. I picked this one up for about 179. If you look at Harbor Freight, they have coupons for these things all the time. So well under 200 bucks, you can get yourself a little welder. It runs off of 120 volts. Everyone usually has access to that in their shops. It's 17 and a half pounds. It's a small inverter welder. And being flux, you don't need to buy a gas bottle. That's a few hundred bucks for a gas bottle alone. And it's just a really simple little compact welder. If you're not using it, it doesn't take up much room in your shop. Now, I know there's going to be some guys that have been welding for years that are going to disagree. And they're going to say either buy the most expensive welder you can or buy a stick machine. The reason I disagree with all those things is if you're just getting started, you don't want to spend a thousand bucks on a welder. All these tools I'm going to talk about in here, I think will cost you about 600 bucks to get all of them total. And the biggest and most expensive one is the tool at the end, and it's not really that necessary when you first get started. Another reason I think some guys are going to chime in the comment section that you should start with a stick welder, and I highly don't really agree with that. A lot of guys think that you should start off with a stick welder because then you learn your technique on that, and you can learn MIG and TIG after that, and it kind of sets the way and paves the groundwork for learning how to weld. I don't really agree with that. I think if you want to get a flux welder, MIG process, get it, learn it. If you want to learn stick down the road, learn it. If you want to learn TIG, figure it out. If you're determined to figure out the process, you're going to figure it out. So I definitely recommend this welder. And if you guys want to learn a little bit more about this welder specifically, I'll put a little link up here on the side. And that uh, link is to a little re welder review on this thing. So if you want to see it actually in action, you can click that link. And another link I'll put up here right now is a little video where I taught my nephew how to weld with this thing for the first time. We went over some welding processes. And uh, so if you're interested in welding, check out those two videos as well. 
So we'll get on to tool number three next. So we covered the angle grinder. You can make nice straight cuts in metal. We covered the welder. Uh, tool number three is a way to drill holes in metal. So I recommend, highly recommend a hand drill or a small drill press. I'll put a few links and some tools on the side here. I don't recommend if you go to Harbor Freight, buy their $30 drill, drill master or something like that. Just buy their midline. I think it's Bauer. I have one. It's a... Uh, 18 or 21 volt, I can't remember, something like that. I have it at work, my work, it works okay. It's about 60 some bucks. And I've never used a small mini drill press. I'm sure it's not top of the line, but all these tools you can always replace down the road when you want a better one. I'd lean towards a drill press first, just because you get more clean, accurate holes on a drill press. Get decent holes with the drill, hand drill too, but no matter what, drill press, hand drill, just get a drill. And these little stepper bits are actually pretty cool. You can get them for 10 or 11 bucks for a set of these things. You got a wide range of holes, you can drill with them. You need some bits. These are not the highest end by any means, but you can find them for 10, 15 bucks on sale. 29 piece, they go from 16th inch all the way up to half inch. Plan on breaking a lot of them. You can resharpen them. They don't last forever. So ones when you break, pitch them out. Just use them as a disposable kit. But anyways, tool number three, you definitely need a drill. All right, so tool number four is a metal vise. Really simple, but it's super useful. You can clamp things in here for grinding. You can bend small pieces of metal in here. You can pound metal on here and do different stuff. And you can actually make some other useful tools. I uh, made these out of some little piece of angle iron and some pipe. You can put them in the jaws here and you can actually bend flat bar with them for just kind of bending and curving pieces of metal. Here's some uh, eighth inch by inch flat bar. You can use these little uh, jigs like this you make. Come up with all kinds of different things for these things. And you can bend stuff. Pretty cool. You can actually make quite a few different benders and breaks, little tiny things for working with smaller piece of metal by uh, utilizing these jaws. I think in the video a little while back, I actually put some heavy duty angle iron in here with some extra clamps and I use them for bending aluminum for making the fenders for my quad truck. This one I got given to me. And one I gave away to a friend a while back. I picked up at a, about the same size. I picked it up for 20 bucks at a yard sale. So they're around, you can buy them new. I think the one on my link over here at Harbor Freight's on sale for 50 bucks. It's probably okay quality. If you really whale on it, probably end up breaking it. This one's, older it's probably built a little bit better but it's got spray paint all over and stuff but anyways you can keep an eye out you might be able to score one of these things at an antique store somewhere or you know junk store garage sale or just go out and buy one new but tool number four is a nice metal vise all right so tool number five is a belt sander now the last two tools here i'm going to talk about they're not high on the list to get right off the bat these are more once you start to fabricate and you enjoy it and you want to invest in a few more tools this one like i said cost me about 250 bucks there's another one i'm going to post on the side here that harbor freight sells commonly on sale for 65 bucks this is a six inch i think that one's a four inch they're not the most powerful sanders i've used much more powerful ones than this and the rpms on them isn't really that high but you know, they have their usefulness. Like, yeah, you can do a lot of grinding and stuff with an angle grinder. But one thing this thing has is you can actually grind and make sure that parts are nice and true. Grind to like precise thickness. You can make sure with the fence on here that you can get everything like right to 90 degrees if you want or 45s. You can bevel parts. You can just round corners. There's a nice touch having a belt sander in your shop. This one also has a disc sander on the side. I don't use the disc sander that much. The idea is you take the table off and put it over here when you want to use it. I'll probably use it more once I fab up and make my own table that's permanent on the side. But this one actually has some interesting features. It's a cheaper sander, like I said, but maybe it's a lack of guards, but I found a few more things that I found useful about it. Of course, you got this front side with the metal platen behind here. It doesn't have a guard up here, so you can utilize sanding and rounding radius things over this drum. I found that's to be useful. This thing will also sit in the vertical position down the horizontal position. So you can actually put a fence on here, a different fence, and you can sand long pieces on this full platen here and utilize that. Another thing that I found is pretty useful, as long as you're careful with it, the whole backside doesn't have a platen on it. It's just a wide belt and it's actually quite flexible. So you can actually sand and fine tune. Once in a while, I find it's really nice to utilize the backside of this thing right here to fine tune and sand some smaller parts and pieces. Sometimes you need a different touch. You don't want to have that platen behind it. 
So tool number five, belt sander. All right, so we bring you guys to the final tool I recommend. It's a six tool of this video, and it's a metal cutting bandsaw. And this is definitely the sander and the bandsaw are not tools you have to rush out and get, but as you start doing more fabrication, you might want to pick these things up. It makes your job a lot easier. The cool thing about this and why I recommend a metal cutting bandsaw over an abrasive chop saw or a metal cutting chop saw, this is the main reason why I recommend one of these over the other saws is you can cut in the vertical position. I use this a lot for freehand cuts. It just is a super useful thing because you can cut, you can put all your parts down here and cut angles and everything like that and duplicate cuts. Um, but to cut freehand is super nice just to fine tune some bits and pieces on here. Um, it's just a super useful function on this saw. You can actually, you know, you can clamp your parts in here. You can cut from anywhere 90 to 45. But you can actually get your parts cut in here. You can turn it on. Once it gets through the cut, it shuts itself off. So you can actually be over welding something and having some more parts and pieces getting cut on this thing. They're a little slower than the abrasive saws and metal cutting chop saw, but the fact that you can start them and walk away and they shut themselves off is a nice thing. I highly recommend buying a better blade. I run about $22, $23 blades on here. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight saw. I think they sell new for about 250 bucks. Don't really recommend buying their blades. Find a better source of blades because more quality blades last a lot longer. If you guys have ever ran the metal cutting and chop saws with the carbide blades, those things are quite expensive. They're $100 blades and you don't get as many metal cuts out of them. They're cut fast, but you don't get as many cuts out of those things as you would expect for. Then you got to send them off and get them sharpened. It's about 30 bucks. This one blade has been on here. I've cut so many feet of metal with this thing. It's unbelievable and it's still holding up. This one I got was when I really started working on getting ready to start building a bandsaw mill. And I'll put a link up here for a video that I actually uh, made. It was the first video I ever posted on YouTube. And I had a really cheap little Flux Lincoln Flux welder that was broken. A friend gave me. I repaired that. I had an angle grinder. I had a cheap drill press with that whole worn out drill press. And I bought this tool for 75 bucks. Used. It was worn out. It doesn't owe me anything. I have plenty of use out of it. But instead, it's got like vice grips up here to tighten the blade now. A bunch of the hardware is missing or different bolts on here now. Me and my buddy picked these things up. I think he got his for 50 bucks because it had some cast parts were broken. I had to repair for them. They both were in a some type of small factory or business that caught fire. And a salvage company came in and salvaged a bunch of stuff. And we bought them from a salvage yard. I think I paid 75 bucks. He paid 50 bucks for his. Mine was pretty beat up and worn out. It doesn't look very good right now, but it didn't look very good when I got it. Yeah, so 250 bucks for a new one. They're super helpful to have around the shop. Well, that wraps up that video. That's uh, six affordable tools I highly recommend getting if you're getting into metal fabrication. Not only do I use these tools around my work workshop at home all the time, but I also do metal fabrication and stuff like that at my work. And I might use different brands of tools, but I use essentially the same things I just described in this video all the time. So just take my advice from things I've learned over the years. These are the tools I use commonly. And if you want to get into metal fabrication, I highly recommend looking into these things. There'll be some people that want to say, those aren't the right tools, get this, get that. If they want to say that, that's fine. Maybe make your own video if you really want to bitch in the comment section. Anyways, enough of that. Check this out, guys. I built a bandsaw mill quite a few years ago, and I'll put a little video up here of me running it and bandsaw, and you guys can click on that link. But I essentially had a broken flux welder that a friend gave me that I repaired. I had that worn out bandsaw, metal cutting bandsaw I just showed you guys. I had this angle grinder right here and my free drill press that was uh, kind of sketchy. You had to wear gloves with it when you ran it because it wasn't grounded properly. I think it would kind of shock you. And a few other hand tools. And I built a bandsaw mill that works wonderful. So if I was able to do it with some basically some simple crude tools, you guys can build quite a bit with the tools I'm recommending here. So one other thing I want to mention before we're done with the video is I'm going to do a sequel video to this and they're going to be five or six essential tools I recommend that are non-power tools, just things like clamps and different things I, I find that really assist me when I'm working in the shop. So keep an eye out for that video. I'll put a link up here when that video is finished. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.